Mini Wargamer Dave here from MiniWargaming.com. Wargamers, what you're about to watch is a game called Wild Ascent. It's made by Lazy Squire Games. Why are we covering this game? Well, first off, because it's a fun game, it was sent to us by Lazy Squire. Second, I'm doing a collaboration with them. And if you guys have been following along the last four months, online, YouTube community, Facebook, Instagram, I've been posting various pictures regarding 3D prints and 3D sculpts and 3D designs and uh, just this idea in general of making a game. Making a miniatures game. A miniatures skirmish board game. A hybrid of sci-fi and fantasy. And how do I know this? It's because of your responses per poll information that you guys have given me. This video is a celebration of the collaboration that we, Mini Wargaming, are having with Lazy Squire so that you can see kind of uh, what they're all about and one of the games that they've made thus far. They've made a number, this is one of a few. Storm Sunder is a game that they've made, already kickstarted, already funded, and Wild Ascent is actually a game they've already made. Now this is another version of Wild Ascent. The second one, version two if you will, a really robust expansion to the existing game that is insane. There's so much stuff. So when you see this game played with myself and Luca, you're gonna see all the miniatures, you're gonna see the rules, we're gonna go in depth. It's a player versus player scenario, it's a death match. There's campaign mode as well, which we're not doing in this video, that's in the future. So sit back, relax, enjoy, and I've also provided a link to their current Kickstarter for the current version of this game, Wild Ascent. We play and call it work. In today's game of Wild Ascent by Lazy Squire Games, we'll be doing the arena mode and we'll be choosing and drafting our gladiators. First things first, we're going to choose a mission. Blood Bounty. Each ascent is worth six victory points. Large creatures, four, and medium creatures, three. The first to 12 victory points is the winner of this matchup. Veraclay says it's time for us to choose our troops. Then we choose our troops because all of our lives belong to her except for the Ascents. All the gladiators do. Luca is my opponent in this game. We rolled off off camera, and Luca is player one for the purposes of activating. I get the first big creature draft. Oh yes. Large creature pick first. Uh, oof. So Dave gets two after this. I like the Wildwood Sentinel because I didn't have him last game. And he's a big boy. All right, interesting. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'll change it up. I'll have what I took last time. Yeah, because you liked him, didn't you? Yeah, I liked the stream caller. <laughs> and I'll take the demon wretch, because I did not oh, have him last time. I wanted the demon wretch. Did that, you? That means I get the phoenix. The phoenix is still good, but I liked it. I really Poor liked phoenix. The, I liked the demon wretch. Last pick. It's okay. Someone has to. Medium creature, draft time. So Luca will choose one, I will choose two. He will choose two, then I will choose one. Yeah, without a doubt, I'm taking the lava fiend. <laughs> <laughs> not, that, not that I'm saying it's better. Than it the is. It's obvious. It's it, it is actually the best. I would say. Well, we played one. It, we played one we played game. One game. And it did really well. I'm like, it I did want well. That guy. It was the most fun. I yeah. agree with that. Yeah, so I want him. yeah. Uh, okay. So I will choose. Okay, I'm gonna go with the River Guardian again. He's fast and he's yeah. he's he's awkward to hit. And I'm gonna choose the effigy because uh, I like the ability of just removing all status effects from my allies. I was gonna take. You wanted him, right? That's the second. <laughs> that's yeah, that's why I like the way they do the draft. It's yeah. actually quite clever. There's always something. something there's always something to take. Ah, uh, right. I don't like. I, I felt that way about the lava fiend. I yeah, wanted him, right? That's and true. you wanted him. So what? Oh. Uh, I'm gonna take. I don't think I want the Griffin. Okay, the Griffin is cool because he can fly behind people and get a lot of bonus damage, and he does get to activate twice. Mm -hmm. So if you could pull that off, that's kind of cool. But I think what I'm going to do is take both of these. You can have the Wild's Flower. You don't like the flower. I like the fact that he puts bleed on things, but... but that's all you like about him. That's all I like about him. <laughs> that's all I like about him is right. For our ascents, I get first pick here in the draft, and I'm going to pick Coralt. Luca. And looking over them, trying to change up from last game, I'm going to go with Amalia. She's a weird support ascent, and I like what she's got going on. <laughs> I have now assigned equipment to Coralt. Uh, because I've chosen, you can only choose two uh, abilities that you can use in the game. One is a, a magical, uh, it's a, an accessory, and one is a magical weapon. And so that's what I was able to do. I was able to uh, choose or draw items from those decks, which I have. I chose once, Luca chose twice, and then I chose the last one. For my first accessory, it was Enchanted Bloodstone, which is awesome. I start out the game with minus four health. However, all attacks made by me 
uh, have life steal, which basically means in any damage I inflict, I steal right. exactly. and heal myself. So that's amazing. And that's super good with that Chaotic Staff. Oh yes, because the Chaotic Staff allows me to either choose whether it is physical or magical damage that I'm assigning. And it has a base five damage, which is pretty sweet, in a range of four. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty uh, amazing. I like that very much. For my abilities, Soul Blast, so whenever an ally creature is slain, I assign five damage to an enemy creature. So Ooh, there's no range on that either. You there's also no range. No line of sight, no range. You're like bam, that thing just took five. That's right. It's a uh, maelstrom. It's a uh, fire from the sky. I also have Eclipse here, which means I heal all creatures for two, and I assign two damage to all enemy creatures. That's super good too. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. For my uh, passive abilities here, Soul Feast. Whenever an enemy creature is slain, I heal myself for five. Again, healing and then sever which means that after momentum dice are rolled, I get to choose one of your dice, Luca, and I discard one of it. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> so lots of cool stuff happening here with Core Alt. I chose him because of Corn, and it reminded me of the Chaotic Staff. That's why, that's how I make most of my decisions in life. Let's see what Luca chose. For Amalia, she is an Ophiomancer. She likes to manipulate snakes and magic, uh, and she's all about debuffing and just doing passive area of effect abilities now. I chose to go with uh, Lethargy 1, and, or just Lethargy, and Cold Embrace as her skills for the game. Now Lethargy is a passive effect. All of Dave's gladiators are minus one speed for oh. the entire match. Lethargy. Lethargy, yeah. 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 And that is going to be, uh, I think that's going to be a pretty big deal. That's why I, I chose yes, it. Yes, that's and a massive deal, yeah, Luca. I, I hope it's a big deal. Wow. And, and associated with that is an accessory. So you're like making vines come out of the ground and I'm like moving sure, slower. Or like snakes are going snakes, around. Yeah, and like the, there's just an cool. aura of dread and everyone's feeling lethargic. It's very Nurgle of you. Uh, I went with Cold Embrace as the other one. Whenever she activates, all of my creatures heal too. So just they're off. What? The, every turn, everything heals too. And that, that, I, that gives her another accessory. Not that I looked at the accessory deck, but it was it was between that for this for this game format we're playing or the flood I was thinking about, but I decided I'm just gonna go with the two accessories and the <laughs> passive skills. You know, I I gotta really focus my attacks on her first and kill her, because that's that's way too strong. Oh, she's gonna be way in the back. She's gonna be hiding in the back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and because I took two skills that are associated with accessories, and Dave got the first pick, he took the bloodstone, which is an awesome item. Yes, it is. I took two accessories that I think are gonna work well in conjunction. So we have the Sylvestrum uh, Battle Standard. So she walks around with a battle. Uh, she's a BSB if you're familiar with fantasy. Uh, it's a passive ability. Her base damage is set to zero, and she gets an extra attack die, which will work well with one of her passive abilities. Her it, base damage is set to zero. Yeah, but she goes up to three attack dice. Now I'm not. I'm not super concerned with her doing damage. I like the fact that, um, but also the banner gives all of my other gladiators, all my creatures, an extra attack dice. Okay. So everyone gets one extra attack dice. Yes. Her da base damage goes down to four, but she gains a third attack goes dice. Goes down to zero, you mean? Sorry, uh, zero. From four to zero. Yeah. She gains a third attack dice, and that'll work well with debilitate. When she attacks, now she has an extra chance to roll special, she immobilizes. So if she gets to go first, she gets to pick something and immobilize it. And she has the extra chance because of your lucky charm. Oh, because of the banner. The banner gives her an extra attack dice. So I'm trying to fish. I'm just trying to fish for more. But your lucky charm can re-roll your attack dice, though. Only for my creatures. Is it only for your creatures? Yeah. So okay, I see what you're doing. It now. just gives her an extra die, uh, uh, and she's yeah. she's 100 there to put negative effects on the enemies and That's and help out my creatures. Hilarious. I'm going for a very supportive ascent build. Very. Here. And then wow. the lucky charm. I took the lucky charm and the banner because they work well together. The lucky charm gives all of my creatures the uh, the ability to re-roll attack dice per activation once. I have to keep the second result, but they all have an extra attack die as That's well. a big deal. I think so. Yeah. Well, I don't I've, know. I've, it I've feels never, like a big deal. I've never tried it. I'm very excited to try it, though. Yeah. I'm, I'm going in. I'm feeling strong. It feels like your play style, Luca. Re-rolling dice is and, re -rolling debuffing dice, and me. debuffing me. That's enemy. very Nurgle. And win through attrition. <laughs> that's, that's the hope. Okay. Luca and I have determined the activation order of our troops. On your side here, you have Amalia with the Horn Helmed going first after. We are activating, of course, Yeah. going back and forth, but this is what you will do when uh, you go in line. Wildwood Sentinel, Phoenix, Lava Fiend, and Griffin for your very end, which is interesting because it activates twice. So essentially you get right. an extra one at the very end. It goes at the very, yeah. I think I like the idea of like, I, I see where everything of yours is and then he can choose where to commit to and like try and fight twice yes. in a good position. Yeah, it's a good call, I like that. 
And then your Lava Fiend goes later, therefore is able to attack more that have right, possibly yeah. clumped together. Again, you've already moved your stuff, so like he'll get like, he'll shoot, he'll like, he's like an artillery piece, he shoots lava, and like, oh, you clumped up over there, I'll get you over there. And then your Horned Golem can go up first and, and then defense. And give five yeah, defense to himself. I like yeah. it. You, you I see like what it. I'm doing? Yeah, yeah. I see, yeah. Your, your Wild Wood Sentinel go up and spawn, and then yeah. you can, uh, you know, have little like, little guys. I think that's, that's the interesting. best goal. Yeah, and I then like for, for anyone watching, if you didn't see the previous one, the sense always have to be first. Yes, that is true. So for me, I have a method to my madness here. Uh, Korra goes first, obviously because he's in Ascent. Uh, Exalted Effigy will go first for me That's out hard. of my creatures yeah. because uh, it takes off all of the uh, negative uh, status effects. And then my Demon Wretch will go next because, you know, summoning, plus he's big. So if he's big, he's able to go up there, summon something, and actually do damage. And he causes bleed. Yeah. So that means when you activate your things, chances are the bleed's actually going to affect it Correct. afterwards. Yeah. And then my River Guardian will go next. And I did that because... He's got that cool movement where he can move diagonally, mm -hmm. and you have to be right next to him in order to attack him. You can't attack him with ranged attacks. Right. You have to be right next to him, so that's pretty sweet. Uh, Stream Caller is going to go second last here with the activation on specials, uh, the summoning of uh, the specials, rather. And he also does an incredible amount of damage. It's awesome. Also, when you attack him, he mobilizes you, and I can retaliate against adjacent attackers. So if you're right next to me and attacking me, that kind of uh, you know discourages that a little bit. You want to attack him with your range right. stuff. And then uh, wild wild flower is going to go last because it's the flower and it's just going <laughs> to I don't think anyone I don't think either of us like the wild flower. I don't think so. No, I'm going <laughs> to going to get that kind of a feeling here. But, you know what? Does have bleed. Yeah, it's bleeds nice. You got two things that cause bleed and a little I am a little jealous of that. Are you? A wee bit, yes. Well, I guess that's true, but you, when you activate your Ascent, you automatically heal two on everyone, so it doesn't matter. Oh, that's right, it just counters the bleed. I don't yeah. think that matters. Well, or you can look at the other way around, that the bleed counters that, because yeah. it, helps. it negates the heal, it just removes the bleed token. So my things don't actually heal through, they just remove the bleed token. Ah! Uh, yes. Okay, I like it. But that does leave room for my Phoenix to swoop in and heal eight. Yes. Yeah, it does heal eight. Yeah. And we have deployed, we've alternated going back and forth, starting with the first player. And we also have our obstacles down and everything now too. Yes. Now the obstacles, they need to be placed in the middle six tiles, two up from our deployment zones. We can't actually deploy more than two squares up. Uh, and they can't be directly beside each other, the terrain pieces. Our creatures can, of course. Right. So that's our deployment so far. Before the first battle round, we got a draw from the Sylvestrum deck. And we get an edict. Motivation. At the end of the round, assign one damage to each gladiator, not adjacent to an enemy gladiator. And edicts stay in play oh. for the entire match. So that means there's archers in the stands shooting at those who are not getting adjacent to enemies, eh? Amazing. Very interesting. Oh, look at the... the hey, that's okay. That's I'm, at the end of the round, though. All my guys are melee. Kind of, except for the lava fiend, he's gonna get shot by arrows all game. <laughs> yeah. It's like, is it creatures or all gladiators? It's his gladiators. Oh, so, so is uh, Amalia. She's yeah. gonna be getting shot by uh, archers all game. <laughs> That's okay. Now rolling for momentum dice, and we can uh, roll again and keep the second result. That's the rule for these. That's things. a pretty good roll, other than the blank. Yeah. So I'm gonna reroll that, yep. and uh, yeah, let's. Uh, Might as well, right? Can you get? Let's do that. Okay, more defense. I've assigned extra defense and extra damage to my demon wretch. Uh, defense damage and speed to my stream caller. Oh, that's cool. He's pretty fast already. Or he's very mobile, at least. Well, the thing is, you minus one of my movement. Yes. So that negates that, basically. Feels so good. That's pretty cool. For me. Now I get my five momentum dice. I'm going to reroll the heals, because we don't need those. And we're going to take... All right, so... I'll yeah. take out a damage. Yeah. So uh, a core alt can take away one of my momentum dice. Uh, these, these are useless. That's my dice. sever passive ability. So I only get two in the end here. Uh, we'll go damage on the Lava Fiend and damage on the Griffin. They're, they're more focused on doing damage, so... Plus, it, it doubles up on the Lava Fiend if I can spill over damage with his one ability uh, called Eruption, I believe. Yeah. Yep. And the, the reason the heal isn't useful right now is because it immediately heals. These ones incre increase their characteristics for the entire round, whereas the heals, like, instantly move up their life when I roll it. And nothing's hurt right away. Yeah. First activation of the game is going to be Amalia. And she's going to get an arrow in the knee at some point here. So we're going to just not move her. We like where we're at. Ah, we'll move up one. We're just going to go there. That's it. Super happy with that position. <laughs> that's, that's what I did in the last game. That's ideal. I'm trying to find her front. There we go. The front is uh, there. <laughs> she's facing the pit. Next up, we got Coralt. He will activate. 
I'm moving my three because you minus one for my move. One, two, three. Lethargy. I'm going straight forward there because I'm just going to cause some havoc. I'm going to use my chaotic staff right now on the attack. And before I attack, I get to choose either physical or damage. Or, or uh, magical damage. Mm -hmm. I have a funny feeling that you're supporting Amalia, buffing everyone. It's going to be a real nuisance for me. I hope so. So since that pit doesn't block line of nope. sight, I will attack Amalia with my chaotic staff. This is five base damage, plus one more. Okay. It's only one die on that Six. staff. Six, it's only one, okay. but it's base five. And uh, I chose the uh, yeah the physical, so it's straight six damage on her. Well, she'll go from 22 to 16. Okay. The Horned Golem shall go next. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Horned Golem smash. Yes, that's... Uh, how, how many things do you have to do the magical damage, actually? I might put magic defense on myself. I don't know. Uh, pretty much everything uh, Dave has over there is magical damage, so we're gonna use reinforcement instead and give myself an additional five magical defense. We're gonna That's an action, so you're not gonna attack me. No, it's not really uh, it's not really worth the attack. It's okay. four damage, but All right, yeah. that's fair. That's like a massive blocking line of sight thing that I'm not going to attack, so that's actually a fantastic move. Uh, that messes me up big time. Exalted effigy. So Luca made a really smart move there, and he did I? One, two, three. Yeah, I only moved three because you minus one to my entire. That's why. That's another reason why I got to get rid of Amalia. Uh, and I can. Oh, actually, yeah, let's do this again. Let's go one, two, three. Crazy weird movement. Yeah, let's do that. The reason why is because your rock column is the only thing I can attack. Uh, now you have defense five for both now. Yeah, he's thick. My base damage is four. But I do get four attack dice, which means I'm hoping for a lot of extra damage here so, so that something will go through. Okay, well I got an extra two, which means you only take one damage. You'll go down to 16, like Amalia. All right, Wildwood Sentinel, the first thing you do is you summon one of these skirmishers. Where, oh where, does a skirmisher go? Where, oh where indeed? Uh, behind, and it doesn't bother anybody. I'm just gonna go there. And that's it. Both of us go one, two, three. Stay there. And I'll hang out right there. And then he'll activate. Yep. Err. Doing the same. He moves three, so we'll go <laughs> slow. Bam. Okay. Next up is my demon wretch. Demon wretch. So on activation, I summon one demon spawn. And that's what I will do. I will spawn right there. And I move three with this. Ooh. So I'll go one, two, three. Three, and then I'll attack your <laughs> little little summon. Oh, backtrack. You can only attack the three squares in front of you, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit different movement. I'm gonna go one, two, three, and then I can attack my little guy, that guy. The reason why I want to do that is because the actual demon spawn itself wants to move up and use a shooting attack, but I need to get rid of this summon first mm. before I do that. All right, Luca, three attacks. You got him, and I got him. There's oh, death. My Wildwood Sentinel. Now activating my Demon Wretch. Moving forward. Getting direct line of sight to your wild, Wildwood Sentinel. Three attack dice. <laughs> okay, only one extra. But that's okay. Because I'm base four damage plus the extra that I added. So that's a total of six damage on him. Ooh, he's, got, he's got one magical defense, so he'll take five. He's down to 20. All right. He's bleeding. And indeed, causes bleed. Now it is the Phoenix's turn. I have got a plan. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five. That's it. That's <laughs> Interesting. All, we're doing oh, right protecting now. Amalia. Yeah, just giving some line of sight blocking to Amalia for later. Yeah. And you have uh, not enough range to Only attack. Only range anything. two on the Phoenix's attack, so nothing in range. Okay. Gonna activate my River Guardian. One, two, three. Final move, I'll go right there. Because he can only be attacked by Jason attackers. Mm. And why? Why give it? Why give it to you? <laughs> I don't want to. Four attack dice. Okay, that's uh, really good. So that's an extra four Ooh. on top of the two damage. So six damage in total. He goes ahead, he takes five. He's down to 15. Lava Fiend is up next. Uh, he's got range four and move three. We're gonna go ahead and activate his lava pool because he's not in a great position. 
he is going to turn into a pool of lava there, and he'll reappear. What's the range on your wilds flower, I wonder? I got a range attack of three squares. All right, we're gonna use that to spawn, actually we'll spawn right there. And that's and it. Because that's an action, you do that instead of attacking, so I'll activate my next. Which is a stream caller. I'm gonna move right here. Cause I go one, two, like that. I can move diagonally, cause he moves a bit better. I'll attack your Wildwood Sentinel. My bad, I thought he was a ranged attacker. He's not, he's gotta go right there. He pounch, which is fine. Physical, physical attack with three dice, base five damage with an extra one because I gave it to him this round. And he gets a special, which means he's able to call of the deep. He can summon a water bound. And he's gonna take five more damage from that. He's down to 10. He's already lost 15 health. <laughs> That's what I get for moving him forward so aggressively. And here's my little summon. So he'll go one, two, and then three. He can move diagonally as well because he's swift. And I'm going to attack you. Uh, I don't have quite enough movement to attack your rear arc or your back. Otherwise, I would have had a plus two damage to that. The lethargy's getting him. Your base uh, defense is two, so I got to get at least three to do anything here. And I don't, unfortunately. I reduce the damage. Huzzah. Mm -hmm. All right, the griffin gets to go with a movement of three. The griffin is just going to be aggressive and just fly past things. One, two, three. And then he gets to activate, he has nothing to do, but he gets to activate twice in a turn. So you go one, two, three. <laughs> He's gonna attack the wild flower. Okay. I'm gonna beat him up. We actually get three attack dice now because of this Sylvestrum standard on uh, Amalia. I don't know why, Luca, but for some reason, this is just making me really happy. What the, the Griffin versus yeah. the wild flower? It's our like least favorite ones fighting each other. Yeah, kind of, right? But for me, it's like, I, I thought I was gonna do nothing with my wild flower this turn, but I get to do something. That's true. I yeah. don't think you'll kill me. No, I'm not gonna kill him. I get the extra attack dice, and I'll keep those two results. He's His base damage is five up to seven. Yeah, because you get to re-roll that, right? Yeah, I get to re-roll it, but I have to re-roll everything, and I might as well, if I'm gonna- Do you? Yeah, yeah, I have to re-roll everything with the- uh, Yeah, two the, is, two is- Two's good enough. Yeah, it is. One physical defense, therefore I take uh, six damage. Bring me down to nine. That was brutal. That was good, man. Now it's time for the Wildflower to attack you back. So my attacks cause bleed, and I get four attack dice, causing uh, base damage of two. This is magic attack. Let's see what I get. Just one. That's three. That's a, oh no, I guess like a, I it's a, a one in three chance yeah. that you roll nothing. Griffin goes down to eight health from ten. So the reason why I didn't move at all, even though I have a ranged attack of three, is because you minus one to my move. So I would move two. And because he doesn't, he's not swift, he has to like turn first. turn first, counting as one, and then go again. And so it's like useless. Why am I going to do that? Right. He would just be caught next turn. Yeah. And even if I like managed to go like, like I, I would be facing away from you. Right. I wouldn't be able to attack you. Exactly. So yeah. I might as well just utilize this and attack you. Yeah, you expose your back as well while doing that. So thank you for giving me something to do on my turn. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And a, the, ending the round now, we got to resolve the edict which means that we have to assign a damage to every mm -hmm. gladiator not adjacent to an enemy gladiator. motivation to get in there. For me, that'll be my river guardian and my demon wretch. So they're gonna take one damage each. And then for myself, it's the phoenix, the lava fiend, and Amalia take a damage. Shooting the arrows from the yeah, crowd. Just getting it by arrows, folks. Beginning of the next round, demand. Okay, victory requires sacrifice condition. We have to choose to assign damage to our ascent equal to half their current health, round up. Oh my goodness, that's a big deal. Success, heal an allied creature to full health. Failure, shuffle the unused equipment cards, draw one card and give it to an enemy ascent to use for the rest of the match. Hmm, that's actually a big deal. Yeah, both are bad because we know how good the equipment cards are. Right. Demands are resolved at the end of the round, so we'll come back to this. Next up, we're gonna roll our momentum dice. Let's see what we get this time. Speed is actually a really big deal right now for me. Gonna roll the non and the health one. And I get speed oh, and nice another health, so not bad. Who do you wanna heal? Uh, someone who's damaged. Wildflower? I think he's the only one. I think it's the only thing I attacked, yeah. <laughs> Stupid, I don't wanna heal him, Luca. <laughs> Wildflower going up one. 
decided to put uh, extra defense and speed on my exalted effigy and also damage and speed on my wild flower. Didn't see that coming, did you? No, not at all, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's my turn. After I do the reroll, Dave can choose to discard one of these. Ah, I'll just reroll that. All right. What do you want to discard? Ooh. All right. So Dave, all right. Get the rid of one of these. Coralt, I will sever a bleed. Up a heal? A heal, yeah, yeah. You're gonna get rid of my heals. Oh. Yeah, I said I said bleed because you can use them to get rid of your bleed. Yeah. Yeah. Now you have to. Well, you can. Yeah. It gets I'll, rid of it, but you still have one that. I'll get rid of the sentinels bleed. Yeah. I went with uh, the two extra defense on the horn golem and the wildwood sentinel, and I gave my griffin an extra damage. Okay. Coralt will go first in this battle round. Only three movement because of uh, you limiting me from moving. Big. So one, two. Three. So I'm going to just move back one square. I have a ranged attack that is five away. Well, you can hit either one of those two, essentially. Everything else is blocked by line of sight. Not the Phoenix. I'll hit your Lava Fiend. Okay, bring it on. Oh, yes. Just using my regular attacks there, Luca. Let's see what I get. Oh, wow. That's Maximum damage. Plus five. Excellent. So that's eight damage. Corn definitely wants it. Against the Lava Fiend. And that's magic damage, which you have magic defense of one. So that's seven damage on you. And puts him down to four from 11. So from 11 to 4. Wow. Big hit. Amalia's activation. The biggest part is her cold embrace. My whole team heals too. All, all creatures. So not her, but all the creatures heal too. Brutal. Olam only goes up 1 because he's only missing 1 health. Amalia doesn't go up. The Phoenix goes up 1 health because he's missing. He got an arrow. Now, <laughs> the Sentinel will go up to 12. The Bird goes up to 10. And then the Lava Fiend... No, sorry. The Bird stays at 8. He's got bleeding. He just gets rid of his bleeding. Yes. And then the Lava Fiend goes up to 6. And then just remove the bleed off the griffin. So, so th instead of healing at all. That's why uh, Coralt's sever ability was so good, because you could only put uh, the heal on one of yeah. your creatures. So you had to keep it on your griffin. I had to keep it on one of the two, and I, I put more value in the griffin there. Yeah. We're going to activate a model. We're actually going to move her, so it's one to face that way. Two. And three, I guess. We'll just go right there. Keep facing that way. And she's going to use a free... she got an ability called Pendulum. It's a free action to use, and she assigns five, she pretty much transfers life from one of my creatures and gives it to another. So we're gonna take life from the Phoenix. Yeah, so the Phoenix will go down to 10, mm -hmm. and we're gonna transfer that life into the Sentinel, and the Sentinel's gonna go back up by five, bring it to 17. Oh, wow. So I'm able to like just transfer my health around and then heal everything passively. Yep. And then she's gonna attack this Hydro Spawn. I think it's called the Hydro Spawn. It's the only <laughs> thing in line of sight and range. Yes, it's a water bound. I don't know why I want to keep it calling everything a Hydra Spawn. So because of her banner, she her base damage is zero, but she gains an extra attack dice. So I, I kill it. Oh, it's also immobilized. <laughs> <laughs> Overkill. Activating my exalted effigy. Moving my effigy over there, and I'll attack your Lava Fiend that, once again. That's only two instances of movement for anyone watching. He just turns sideways, turns... That's oh, actually three. He turns sideways, turns that way, then turns back this way. But he's, he's swift. Yeah, he's moved forward now. Yeah. Therefore, he's able to do that. Yeah, no problem. So technically, it's one, two, three. And I had one extra one because I gave myself extra movement. Just didn't need it. Didn't quite need it. Four base and damage attack. That might have been a big mistake. Ooh, that's six damage. Six in total. But I got my, I got defense of one, so he's got one health left. You do. One freaking health with that. I should have healed. I should have healed the lava fiend with the pendulum, not the sentinel. But I got a little lucky. You got lucky there. One more, you would have died. Yeah, one more. The horned golem is up next. Loses magical defense. You gonna put it back on him? Uh, no, I'm gonna probably fight with him now. Yeah, that's probably wise. I don't know where to fight though. We're gonna go. One, two, three. And we're going to punch the effigy. Is that the regular attack? The Horned Golem is going to take... Uh, he's going to sign four damage to himself to pull a chunk of rock off him and throw it right in a straight line in front of him. <laughs> awesome. So from 17, the Golem goes to 13 health, and then he does a six attack dice to attack against both of those characters. So wow. the, the effigy and the, uh, the ascent. Now the banner doesn't help with this because it's it an ability. It's an, it's an ability, but the lucky charm will. So this is against the effigy first. Uh, I'll reroll that. That's kind of bad. So the effigy will take three, and then Coralt, Coralt will take oh six. Yeah, that's a lot. Effigy has one armor right now, therefore it takes two damage, bringing me down to fifteen. Coralt has one defense for physical. We're 
we're guessing that's a physical. It's a rock. That's it's a rock. I throw a rock. Type. Yeah, it's got to be physical. So uh, I take uh, five damage instead of six. Which brings me down to 11. Demon wretch time. Time to summon a demon spawn. Here they come. I'm going to spawn behind him this time. And then I move two instead of three. And then I'll attack your griffin. Griffin. Three magical attacks against your griffin. So it takes two, so therefore one damage on your griffin. All right. He's down to seven. Okay. Boom. My other demon spawn is going to go one, two, and then attack your rock golem. These are magical attacks. Rock golem has uh, defense one, therefore so it takes two damage. Takes two. He's down to 11. Okay. This is, you know what? There's very much a chess aspect about this where it's difficult to see many moves ahead. Yeah. Because I didn't see this until right now. So I'm going to move my Demon Wretch ahead. And because of the front facing arc, yeah, you just shoot the line of sight. And shoots the Lava Spawn. So the Lava Spawn's dead. Don't even have to uh, roll it. It's auto kill because of base damage. Yeah, he's only got one health left. Oh, regrets. I could have healed it so much. So because your Lava Fiend was killed, Soul Feast. Whenever an enemy creature is slain, he'll sell for five. So Coralt actually goes up five health. Oh man, guys, I had a plan to kill him this turn too. <laughs> and it just, it, I thought I had blocked that Lava Fiend perfectly. <laughs> and the, 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 that sucks. Oh man. Oh, that's Wild Ascent Arena. I was going to kill him this turn. I had it all planned out. One, two, three, four, five, back, yeah, back to 16. Back to full health, full health. And here's the crazy thing about this, because in my turn, like we were just talking off camera, we have so many regrets. Yep. We do something like, oh, I should have done the other I thing. I could have healed the Lava Fiend. I, I didn't need to heal this guy. Oh, oh man, it was bothering me so much. Beginning yeah. of the turn, when I was using Coralt here, I was thinking, oh, do I attack your Griffin or your Lava Fiend? If right. I attack your Griffin, a better chance of actually taking it out. Therefore, you don't get to attack, activate twice with it and attack me. And the fact that I didn't take out the Lava Fiend with my Effigy, I was like, oh, big regret. Oh, yeah. man. I didn't actually see the Demon Wretch's ability to attack him uh, until well, well, it wasn't there until with him. the thing moved out of the way, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Well, uh, I'm going to go with the Sentinel. Uh, he is going to summon a little dude here. A little skirmish is going to show up right there. One, two, three. Well, he's going to punch the Demon Wretch. <laughs> <laughs> Revenge! Revenge. This is against the Demon Wretch. I get the extra attack die because of the banner. And I'll keep the three. Three, di three physical damage against the Wretch. Okay, and my wretch has zero defense against physical, so it just takes three. So down to 11 health. All right. Because you moved up to the sentinel, the sentinel's going to sit there and give you those giant wooden trunk hands. <laughs> and he will get an, a fourth attack die. So he's going to do five physical damage. Plus, I'll reroll that with the banner. Oh, oh one last is actually six. So I went down from six. Uh, okay, well, that's what I get. Puts me down to five health on the Demon Wretch. Pretty good hit. Time for my River Garden to, uh, Guardian, Garden, to activate. So I'll move up one, and then I will attack you. All right. Actually, look at him hold the line. If I do that, and I, I don't think I cause knockback, so I don't even make it matter. You're tired. No, I do. Yeah, you have to do the other attack for knockback. I do. Huh. Although his ability of Tidal Wave is cool, that would cause knockback, and then uh, you would gain extra damage from that. It also hits my guy, so I don't want that. It would also cause knockback on him, which would knock him into there and give him another damage, too. Forget it. <laughs> Not going to do that. So I'll do that. I'll attack you. Just a regular watery attack. Oh, yes. Magic damage is two, plus four attack dice, getting another three, so a total of five. All right. He reduces that by two, and he'll take three. So he'll go down. He'll be at 14. Okay. And then... This is a Phoenix. Phoenix is up next, and I think I'm going to be aggressive. It's got movement of five, so one, and fly. Two, three, four, five. Oh, geez. Flies right on over. Wow. And uh, we are going to, well, that's all my movement. We're not going to attack, because we could attack a demon spawn, but we don't care too much about that. We are going to use his soothe ability. We're going to assign four damage to the Phoenix, bring it down to six, and then we're going to heal eight damage onto the Sentinel, putting him up to 20. Oh, jeez. Back up to 22. Oh, ridiculous. He is thick. Stream color's up now. Oh. <laughs> do I attack the thing that was just healed? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, or do I kill the Phoenix, which comes back to life and can also heal? I don't know. One. Two, He's three. abandoning the cause to go for the Phoenix. Absolutely, because the Phoenix needs to die. No more of this shifting around, this health. 
Um, so yeah. it does come back to life, but it only comes back to life once. Right, we're gonna trigger his, we try, we're gonna attempt to trigger his rebirth now. And the def defense is only once, as, uh, one as well. So yeah. I'm going to attack with my regular attacks, my base damage there, which is physical is five, and I get to roll three attack dice on top of it. Oh, you didn't do it. And I didn't do it. He's got one health left. Oh my goodness. Just like the Lava Fiend. Just like the Lava Fiend. But you also have, uh, actually, that is your last activation. Well, you, know, you have the, uh, I'm going to try and kill that stupid flower. <laughs> <laughs> I got to kill the stupid flower. All right, Griffin, this is the big one here. He's going to activate Agile. He's going to move. Get one, two, three. fly over me. He's going to attack you from behind. Oh, get. No. So because it gets activated twice, the the wilds flower is dead. We're gonna roll the dice anyways. Uh, I could reroll it. I guess I will reroll it. everything. So that's actually ten damage because he's five damage with the characteristic upgrade and attacking from behind to seven plus three. So that's ten. He has ten health, but you have one one defense. So he's down to one health. He's down to one. But the Griffin is agile and he gets to activate twice. So it's just gonna attack again from there, and it'll do enough damage enough to kill, to it. kill yeah. him. Yeah. Okay. And then you heal your leader five again. I'm I'm done. At, but he's already at full health. I'm done attacking him. <laughs> But Soul Blast is activated whenever an ally creature is slain, assign five damage to an enemy creature, which will go on to your phoenix. Oof, so he is going to uh, turn into a phoenix egg and rebirth. He'll automatically go back up to 15 health. And so because you killed my wild flower, I'll just flip that over so we know that it's dead. And then uh, the, the guards shoot arrows into the arena to anything that's not engaged. And I honestly think that is Amalia only. So she'll go down to 14 health from 15, because she's the only thing not engaged with an enemy. Yeah, we're pretty clustered over here, so. And, uh, we... Now to rectify the demand here, so we need to decide. Are we going to have damage our ascents, or are we going to give an equipment to the enemy ascent? Um, so this is what we're going to do to decide this. I'm going to choose a sword for damage, or blank for equipment for Luca, and you will do the same. I've already chosen. Okay, already chosen. Let's see what I'm going to do. Here, I'll do this. Boom. Yeah. Okay, we, we give each other equipment. Give each other equipment, yeah. That makes sense. I, I would go down to eight health, and you would undoubtedly kill me, so. Uh, you, 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 you have a lifesteal, but then... Even still. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, so we're going to randomly give out cards to each other. I'll give Dave one first. I'm just going to randomly cut the deck and do the top card off there. So Dave's going to get that, which is an accessory, for his ascent. Nice. Handful of sand! Nice, you got a handful of sand. Awesome. So Gladiator's attacks have on damage blind and on special fatigue. All right, I'm going to shuffle it again. I'm going to... Cut it. So that was minus one. Uh, actually, it was minus two, I think. Uh, fatigue is minus two attack dice. Minus two attack dice, and then it's minus two uh, something else. Or no. So blind is minus two attack dice, and fatigue is minus two speed, which is awesome. Because we get a third card for your ascent. You know, it's funny because before the game, I was actually really considering I was, yeah, that. Yeah, it's good you got that. Yeah, so thank you. And then a random, and uh, cut the you just cut the deck, and I'll take the top. There you card. go. Ooh, I get armor. Uh oh. Uh oh. What's it going to be? Is it going to be that bad shield? Enchanted cloak gives her two more magical defense. That's it, just two more magical defense. Well, I'm never going to attack her with magic, because she's four already. <laughs> she's got six magical defense. Wow. This demand is now gone. Picking up a new one. Demand. Leave none unscathed. So we have to apply targeted to the enemy creature who has the highest health at the beginning of the round, which is right now. Oh, wow. And we must attack that creature. On success, uh, that creature this round has a plus two bonus dice. And then failure, assign three damage to each allied ascent. Highest health, so Wild's Wood, yeah, Sentinel, we'll it and then uses it. Mine's the Stream Color. So it looks as though Veraclay wants us to destroy the biggest creatures in the arena. Now rolling momentum dice. Oh, That's healing. That's a lot of healing. Interesting. That is interesting. I think this is the round of healing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm not really concerned too much about... Um, the healing. I think one thing can be healed, so that's what I'll do. Okay. Yeah, all the rest I don't care about being healed. And yeah, that's much better. One will be on the Demon Wretch, because, you know, that just makes sense. So I've healed my Demon Wretch and my River Guardian, and I've put an extra damage on my Exalted Effigy, and an extra shield on my Demon Wretch, because I have a funny feeling he's going to be attacked. <laughs> Alright, Momentum Dice for me. Oh, that's pretty good. I'll just keep it. Okay. Well, would you, what would you like to get rid of? Well, you know, uh, there's no bleed on you right now, so it's not like any of that matters. You know what, Luca? Here we go. I'm going to sever your shield. All right, so no defense, eh? Okay, well, we're going to use these two heals right now, I guess. Griffin will go to 8, and the Horn Golem will go to 12. We'll go Sentinel and Griffin, because they're both probably going to be attacking this turn. 
All right, I go first. When she's activated, all of my creatures heal too. The Sentinel will go up to 24. The Corn Golem goes up to 14. Corn Golem? Corn Golem, and then the Griffin goes to 10, back to full. Honestly, there's nothing to really attack either. She's more of a support. Like, there's no, no line of sight to really anything. So we're going to go uh, one, two, three, I guess. Yeah, we'll just move there. We're facing towards the camera right now. Oh, that's it. Coralt will go next. Coralt. I'm going to attack you instead with Coralt. Who is he attacking? Phoenix? I, I like the idea of attacking Phoenix because I don't want you healing people being all like that. Mm. All right, so I'll go a one, one, and just attack you from where I am. And I get plus two damage because it's a rear exactly. attack. Yep, yep. I use my regular attacks and uh, five dice. Okay, so I get three added to my three, six, plus and then two eight. for behind, yeah, eight damage. Minus that would have been max here. Yeah, minus one for the defense. I'm going to take seven, which puts me down to eight on the Phoenix. All right, the Golem is up next. He's going to attack. I think he's just going to punch the Effigy uh, just because it, it's right there. I mean, I could, I could go for Coralt, but uh, no, I can't because I don't have the speed. It'd be one, two, three, and then I wouldn't. That's all he's got. So he's going to punch the effigy. So he does four physical damage, plus he gets the an extra attack die. Special? Nothing on the special. I'm going to re-roll it, because I got the luck stone anyway. Oh! oh geez, the second time it's backfired on me. I should just get one. Okay, well, anyways, <laughs> he does four damage, but he does have knockback on his attacks. Okay. So it'll do one bonus damage. Oh, one assigned damage. So To who? Just to you, uh, you being pushed back and not being able to actually go to that square. Okay. Is Coralt hurt? No, Coralt's fine. All right. Five damage then, down to ten, because I have no defense. Now it's time for my effigy to activate. On activation, heal self for four. Yep. And he goes back up to fourteen. So I'm going to have some fun here. One, two, three. And I attack the phoenix and try to take it out. I do base damage four, plus my four attack dice. Oh, actually a base damage five, because I gave it an extra damage. That's an additional four, so nine damage in total. Oh, you got him. And kill the phoenix. Goodbye, phoenix. And then I think he gets to do something if something dies. He does. So I heal myself five whenever an enemy is killed, enemy creature, but I believe I'm at max. Scratch that, I am at max right now, because my max is 16, because of my enhanced bloodstone. So I'll, I'm just going to go like this, because I could have attacked the exact same. Right. And the reason why is you've already activated your things over there that could cause serious damage. Right. And I want to protect myself against your griffin. Yeah, the griffin, if he was facing that way, the griffin could have gone attacked and then attacked and then hit him in the back once. Exactly. Which probably would have killed him. All right, Wildwood Sentinel time. He is going to spawn a little uh, skirmisher. And uh, well, there's no real other option here. I do want to try to get this thing killed. So we're going to summon, yeah, we're going to summon like that, and we're going to attack with this one first into him. Then the battle standard gives all allied gladiators an extra attack. So four damage to the... Uh, oh, wow. Well, minus one because of the defense. Right. So he'll go down by three, down to uh, three. Interesting. And then this one, I can get greedy and try and take it out with this summon, and then he can then freely attack the guardian. Mm -hmm. But... I could also just attack the summon with it, and then he could just finish that off. We're going to have this skirmisher attempt to try and take out the demon spawn. Does get four attack. Oh, he does it. That's three damage, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. Because with the negative one. Demon wretch has been eliminated, which means the summon has also been eliminated. So you kill me there. And uh, two. 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 Yeah. And that activates Coralt's soul burst. Which assigns, so which assigns five damage to an enemy creature. And assign five damage to the griffin. I right, bring him down to five from ten. Now the Wildwood Sentinel's free to attack because the summons were the ones who finished uh, everything off. So the Wildwood Sentinel's going to punch the Water Guardian, I guess. <laughs> the extra attack die. And I'll keep all four. So that is ten damage <laughs> on the, uh, the River Guardian. Wow. Absolutely zero defense on him. So he goes from 15 down to five. Yep. Okay. Speaking of the River Guardian, why don't I just attack you back? Okay. So I'm going to go one, two, three, so that I can attack your 
rock, horn, horn golem. golem. Damage will just go straight through because you have zero magical defense right yeah, now. Yeah, I got no magic defense. And let's see what I can add to it. <laughs> only one. one. Okay, so three damage on you. Because I'm only base damage too. Well, that brings him down to 11. All right, Griffin, you got to be a hero and do a trade here. <laughs> we're just trading. That's all we're doing at this point. Trade, trade, trade. Uh, we got move three. He'll go one, two. Uh, well, three he can't attack, but then he give. Yeah, there's no point in that. So he'll just go from there. He'll attack the uh, effigy. So we're doing five damage base because of the strength characteristic, and we get three attack dice, which I will re-roll. Oh, there we go. So that's seven damage. Okay, so it goes straight through. Which means I'm down to seven. So if you do the same thing, you can kill me. Yeah, I don't think I want to move with him. I think I just want to sit there and attack, and we're just going to roll the dice. I need to show two successes. Oh, we got him. But okay. uh, my guy's dead now, too, I assume. That's right. Because <laughs> Coralt will soul blast you. Yeah. So yeah, boop boop. <laughs> <laughs> my stream caller will activate next. A one. A two. All right, and then attack. My base damage is five physical. Your rock column has five physical defense, yes. so basically any bonuses on my dice. Yeah, you're just looking for bonus uh, hits on the dice. And I'm especially looking for a uh, special because then I can summon. No little, summons allowed, only me. A little guy. How, do you get one for each? Eh? Woo -hoo -hoo. It says on each special, so I get to summon two water bounds. Oh, that's not good. We're from 11 to 8. Awesome. So one will go here, and another will go here. Beautiful. Then they can move diagonally because they're swift, and then I will go like that, and I'll attack you for, with this one. Uh, on second thought, instead of going there, I'm gonna go there. Yeah, re realizing these guys have five attack dice. And so even if they got perfect, yeah. no damage. He's so got five physical defense. I'm gonna go here. They are. Uh, they're swift. They're swift, so can they move diagonally? One, two, and then I'll go three, so I can attack you, big dude. You got two physical defense, so let's hope for more than that. So you get to take one damage. I'll take one. He's down to twenty-three. And then my second summon will do the exact same. Come on, come on, come on! Same right. thing, one, one more damage. damage. 22. And that's, uh, you know, there's stuff in the way for you to deal with, which protects my uh, water bound, which is awesome, or my uh, river guardian, rather. Yeah. So, awesome. That actually worked out perfectly. Uh, we need to satisfy this demand here, which, which yeah. uh, technically you, you yeah. were attacked. Oh, actually, you have two... What do you have... Ooh, they don't have a base damage listed. Do they oh. get the bonus base damage? So considering the uh, success of the attacks here against your uh, massive creature, Sentinel, yeah. I get plus two uh, base damage for each of those attacks, so it's an additional four damage you would take. Yeah, so he goes from 22 to 18, actually. A little and more damage on him than we thought. And because of that, I was actually successful because I managed to attack you, so I don't have to take three damage on my ascent. What about you? Me, I do. I didn't bother attacking the uh, the caller there, so I'm gonna go to 11. I feel like that's a pretty paltry failure. It's not that bad not at bad. all. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I, I, you know, honestly, my her all her damage she's taken has pretty much been from whatever the edicts have been. Yeah. Plus the initial attack from Coral early on. Speaking of edicts, she takes additional damage right yes, now. Yes, she does. She gets shot by an arrow, and so does Coral. <laughs> Yep, because he's not by an enemy, so and he I goes down by one. I think yeah, both of both of our uh, ascents just take arrows to the knees there, and that's uh, that's that for this round. Beginning of the next round, let's get rid of that demand and see what the next is. Another oh, demand. Another demand. Give me blood. Please. Condition damage an enemy ascent this round. Oh. So I have to attack. Well, no, it says damage. It doesn't say attack. Right. Um, success. Heal an allied creature for five failure. Assign five damage to an allied creature with the highest health. Okay. Oh, that's, that's pretty tame too. Yeah, it's pretty tame. Rolling for my momentum dice. Oh, wow. Okay, um, those actually look pretty good. And I will roll that, and excellent. I put literally everything on my River Guardian this time, because you're able to stack health on creatures, but nothing else. Everything else has to be at least maximum one uh, per token. So extra move, extra damage, extra shield on my River Guardian. <laughs> Just everything on them. My turn. I'm going to get... Hmm. Yeah, Interesting. also a pretty good roll. That's not bad. Yeah, you know what, I'll just... Which one do you want me no to No shield. Rid? All right, no shield. Bam, gone. All right, no heal, never no mind. No heal. That yeah. one's gone. Yeah, Boom. let's do that. That makes more sense. We got two punchies, a fast, and a, and a shield. We're going to put all three of the characteristics on the horn Golem, because he's <laughs> an outlier out on his own, and then we have the Sentinel with the extra damage characteristic. Makes sense. And I go first with Coralt. And I will just simply turn around here, because, you know, 
makes sense. Smart. And I think I can stay where I am. I pretty, feel pretty good about where I am, so. Well, we should stay for the score there, folks. Uh, both Dave and I have 10 points of the 12 needed, so the next thing that dies is, uh, that's game. <laughs> that's correct. So yes. if I manage to kill this thing in one swoop. Yeah, if you can do You only have right eight now. health right now, so it's. Uh, eight health and one defense for magical attacks, that's it. Mm -hmm. Coralt is going to, uh, he's gonna get you here. You gonna get me? Oh yeah. Attacking you with my regular attacks. So base three damage plus another two. So five damage in total. You have one defense, so you take four. He takes four, he's down to four. Oh, it's getting close. Interesting, interesting. All right, Amalia, she's gonna continue being annoying when she activates everything heals two. So the Sentinel goes up to 20 and the Golem goes up to six. But we're gonna use her Pendulum ability. Well, we're gonna move her first, I guess. Sure. Well, Pendulum's a free action, we'll move her first. We'll go one, two, three. <laughs> and then we'll use our pendulum, which transfers five health from the sentinel into the golem. Oh my goodness. So the sentinel goes down to 15 and the golem goes up to 11. <laughs> <laughs> Just all this weird swapping of health all over the place. Uh, and she doesn't have range to attack anything because um, the little spawn is behind the well, uh, spinning what do you blades. Know? So I have uh, no attack with her. What a shame. What a shame. But that's actually cool. Like as much as that's uh, annoying, it is cool to see the ability. It's like, right. hey, you actually get to use her stuff and you saved your guy, there, thereby not dying right now. Because exactly. I could have attacked him with the, my water dude. Speaking of my river guardian, let's go ahead and uh, Oh, deal. is he next? Oh, he is next. He is he? next. He's going to yeah. deal some damage to you. So I'm going to go one, two, because I'm uh, swift. Uh, and then my final move will go like that. And you know what? This is the perfect timing for me to use my special ability. My tidal wave, because that causes a knockback. Yeah, and I'm right beside the pit. So I can knock you back into the pit, which means that you actually lose your turn. You have to spend your turn getting out of the pit. And it's an extra damage, I think. So um, that's a big deal, because he goes next. He activates next. He doesn't take an extra damage. He just falls. He just loses his turn. OK, yeah, so that's a bigger deal then. He spends his whole turn moving out. Uh, it's, it's, it says he, he did, his whole activation is getting out of the pit. So no moving, no fight. He, he just gets placed adjacent to it. Amazing. Yeah. Now this is a bit of a sacrifice because it hits all adjacent gladiators, which is my guys too, these two. But it does get your little guy as well. Yeah. So that actually is kind of good. So here, five attack dice. I'll start with you. Is this into who? This is into your uh, horn golem. Horn golem. All right. This, is this magical? Uh, four. It just says five attack dice against adjacent gladiators. Oh, it's typically the type that they usually use to attack with anyway. So then it would be magical. So four. So six in total. Seven, because I have an extra damage on him this round. Oh no, that's only with his regular attack. That's yeah, with his it? regular attack, yeah. So it's just... It's just only four damage. It's only four. Yeah, but he reduces it by one, so he takes three. Yeah. So he's at eight, and he gets thrown in the pit. Nice. And then you have to roll for this guy too. Alright, so I roll for the little just dude. Gotta, you just gotta throw one simple. Yep. Oh dead. wow. He's okay. Dead. And then water for a uh, stream caller. Let's see if uh, I can get some uh, nothings here. Okay. Two. What's his magical two. defense? My guess is that he has uh, two. Yeah, two magical yeah. defense. So he nothing. does he does take one damage because of the knockback. Would knock him into there and he can't be pushed over there. That's fair. So then he'll go down there. And then Coralt is currently at fifteen. Ooh, that's four. Magical defense of three, so he takes one damage. He's knocked back and he stays there. And uh, that's yeah. that. Yeah, no damage range. And that's the, that's the River Guardians. That's turn. pretty cool. And it's not bad. Yeah, yeah, it's cool to actually see the ability. And then it's quick. My turn's quick. Uh huh. It's, uh, the Golem spends the entire turn climbing out <laughs> of the pit. No, no actions, no moving. He's just, that's his home now. Brutal. Uh, I guess he'll face that way. Yeah. I don't know, he'll go there. I don't know. He'll go there. Stream caller will go next and activate. I'm gonna take this target off. That's from last round. Stream caller's turn. I'll go one, two. Uh, hmm. This is curious. Let's not do that. I figured you're just gonna go there. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of a bad spot to go though, because then my my back is. Uh, that's a good. You you place him in a really good space. You made it so I'm vulnerable. My back's vulnerable. I don't like that. So after looking at the board, I'll go, I'll go like this. One, two, three. One eighty turn. So I'm not vulnerable because that'd be silliness. It's punch and golem time. Golem, golem. Five base damage with three attack dice. Looking for some summons. I get one summon. Stop it with the summons. <laughs> is that how much? Is that six damage? Uh, that is six damage. Well, yeah. He's got six defense physically, so he's okay. <laughs> oh my god. He's got goodness. the little shield on him. 
So I'm gonna summon there and then I'll go one, two. So this one will attack you. Five attack dice. Okay. One, you probably have enough. He's got enough defense to not suffer that. Uh, the second one will attack you. It's a good thing you know. Oh, uh, that's four. five. So he, oh, that's five. Okay, well he takes three, I guess. Wow. Uh, one, two, three. <laughs> Jeez. And then uh, the last one could attack last him. One. Now the question is, do I do that? I think I will, because otherwise he's just going to get a free attack and kill one of my guys. So, uh, yeah, he'll attack him. Look, you get bonus two damage. Yeah, pretty much automatically kill him from behind. Yep. There you go. No, it's his turn. He's going to go ahead and summon one. He's going to summon one right here. And he's going to go one, two, and attack that. Yeah. Get the extra attack die, and it takes out your it's summon. Death. Death. So that's me. And then you get to activate. Go one, two, three. Is he move four? You only uh, move three. Three. Yeah. So he'll punch. He'll punch that guy who just takes him out. Yeah. Just gotta get rid of these spawns, man. <laughs> Resolving the Sylvestrum deck. Edict. Okay. Let's take some damage wherever things need to take damage. Oh, your Hydra spawn takes over. You know your guard. Oh no! Wait, no. This is all fine. Your our sense take a damage. Yes, they do. Down to 14. And my Sentinel takes the damage as well. He's down to 11. Yep. And then all of this is fine. The demand. So I didn't manage to uh, attack, or damage rather, your Ascent. So yeah. I have to assign five damage yeah. to an allied creature. All you did was damage your own Ascent. <laughs> yup. Yeah, so I'll, uh, and it has to be on the highest wounded one. Yep. So it's gonna be uh, one, two, three, four, five. So my stream caller goes down to 12. All right. And I also didn't do any damage to the Ascent. Like, Dave did damage to himself, I didn't do it. So, one, two, three, four, five. I'm at six with the Sentinel. All the way from 23 or 24 as well. It's like, those, those stupid spawn with that targeted ability did <laughs> so much free damage to him. Yes. We keep sp Get rid of this demand. Please, no more demands. Whim! A simple gift. Heal the Ascent with the lowest health for three. If all Ascents are the same health, discard this card. Hey, I get heal him. for three on my Ascent! Yeah, you do. I'm at nine? Yeah, so I just go one, two, oh, three. Oh, come on. It doesn't really matter. That doesn't really affect too much, I don't think. Let's just get rid of that right away. So whims are... Right away, yeah. Right away. So the demands are at the end. Yeah, the edicts are passives. The whims are immediate things. She kind of throws you a bone. And the demands are like, I want you to do this this round. Okay, well, we're all aware of what she's going to do. She's going to heal both the Horned Golem to ten and the... Guardian to eight. Now, I don't think I'm going to use her pendulum ability. There's no real reason to yeah, do that. Yeah, they're super close in health. Oh, we have to roll our momentum dice. They would both be nine health. That's your only thing that you could do, right? Ah, uh, if, I, if I, he'd go down to five and he'd go back up to 13, and that's, that's not great. I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it has to be five. It can't has be, to be five. I can't. Interesting. Like, yeah. yeah. So that's good. I've uh, successfully made it so you can't use your pendulum ability. They're perfectly balanced in damage there. <laughs> Got the momentum dice. We'll get them out of the way. Ah. Uh, Three speed. The speed. I'm gonna reroll one. Of, I'm gonna reroll two of the speeds. All right, there we go. We got that. Which one would you like to get rid of? <sighs> we got two heals, a punch, uh, a shield, and a speed. I get a heal out of there. Goodbye, heal. Yeah, I suppose so. That makes sense. Heal will go on the sentinel. I suppose it would bring him up to nine. And then that's put all the characteristics on the sentinel. Wait, so it's gonna go. Ooh, how much health does this guy have left? Five. He's at seven. Ooh, seven. And he does. Yeah, it's close, man. You know what? We're gonna put the punch. We're gonna put the punch on the golem. Hmm. Nice. She attacking? Oh wait, yeah. Yeah, you throw your dice too. Let's see what I can get on mine. Whoop. Oh. Oh wow. That's pretty good. Actually. You know what? Since we can stack healing, let's reroll these. Oh, he's gonna fish for healing, eh? Oh yeah, four healings. So, um, back up to eleven with my river guardian, <laughs> and I'll put uh, a shield on my river guardian. All right. Now we'll go back to Amalia where she just simply moves and attacks. So we'll have her go one, two, three, and then she'll put her attacks into that spawn. And then it's just dead. Uh, I, I don't have to base damage. I got Oh, one. true. Oh, she got It's she got dead. Yeah. <laughs> Coralt will attack. Normally moving four, but moving three right now. So I'll go one. Uh, huh. <laughs> huh. I might actually have to stay here to get line of sight to you. Yeah, I have to stay where I am, unfortunately. Base damage three, let's see how much uh, attack uh, damage he can inflict. Another three, and I inflict blind, 
and uh, fatigue. So minus two attack dice, minus two movement on your horned golem. Total of six damage, no defense, so he just takes six damage. Takes these down to four. This could be it. This could be it. Does that look good for him? Could be it. Just after checking the card here, uh, he's definitely blinded, but he's not fatigued because I needed to roll special, which I didn't. So blind is a minus two attack. Yeah, so he'll have no attack dice. So that's actually the better one. Well, it's actually minimum one, I think. That's, yeah, so it actually does nothing to you. <laughs> well, I, I have the, uh, the equipment that gives me two attack dice, so it does reduce one of it. Okay, that's fair. Well, it's the Horn Golem's turn. Uh, the Horn Golem is going to punch the River Guardian, I suppose. I got base damage five, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. And one attack die because I'm blinded. Okay. And nothing on the special. This is damage, so that's six damage, but you have one defense, I think, on it. I right have currently have one, so I just take five damage. He's down to six. But we do have knockback on our attacks, so we're going to over there. And next I'll go with the River Guardian. River Guardian has range attack, so I'll go one, two, three, and put my attacks into your Horned Golem. These are magic attacks, Luca. This could be it, because if, if, if you don't kill him here, I'm, I could kill the River Guardian. It's going to come down to dice, I guess. That's right. So here we go. What's your base damage? Oh, my base damage is only uh, two. So you do three damage, you bring down to one? Yup, that's it. Huh, that's funny. But here's the funny thing. If you do kill me, I assign five damage. Does that just mean we kill each other? I think I would, I, I think what you could, were you here? Yeah. Could you have gone one, two, three? I think that's a better spot to go there. Cause I might, I, if you go here, I can summon a thing and it'll go one, two, three, and then attack, and then this one attacks you. Oh, then it's just giving you... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, so that's that's true. So going with the movement, let's just do that. Right, yeah, that's a little bit better. I'm out. All right, big boy's next. First thing he does, summons. Uh, do I get anything if I go here? One, two, three? No. There. One, two. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll summon him there, and he'll attack the Hydra Spawn, I suppose. Okay. Or, sorry, the... Uh, why do I call everything... Stream a, caller. Stream caller. I call everything that's got weird water tentacles a Hydra Spawn. <laughs> I don't even know why. So no. even the summons here are called water bounds. I, I, I've, liter water I've literally been calling, I've been calling the stream caller a hydro spawn. I've been calling the <laughs> river guardian a hydro yes. spawn. And I've been calling the summons that he has hydro, hydro spawn. spawn. All right. I have no idea where I'm getting that from. <laughs> we have four attack dice uh -huh. because of the banner. So he, that's three physical damage. Three physical. So two damage it takes. Got him. Boop, boop. And next one. And next buddy's going to go one, two, and strike at the... River Guardian with four <laughs> attacks. He does three physical damage. Yeah, minus, minus one. one. So two. So he'll go boop boop. And then now you get to activate your big guy. Big guy. Big guy. And you go first. Aw. If, if, if I got to go first next round, I could have healed again. Ah, but I, I lost my chance to heal. <laughs> because I could, I, I could move forward with him and sacrifice all the summons, heal him six. And then Amalia goes, and I heal two, and then I yep. set five health for five health again. It would have been nice, but unfortunately, it is not nice. We do move four, though. I don't think I can do anything with four. He's got basic movement, so one, two, um, yeah, yeah, like uh, three, three, four, four. right? Yeah. yeah. And then okay. his, his back is exposed, but I mean, that's fine. Gonna leave it up to the stream caller now. So physical damage five. Physical defense on the Horn Golem is five, so I need to roll a single sword yeah. or more. So yeah. equivalent, just so you guys know, is a three plus on a single dice using three dice. It is, yeah. Yeah, so let's see if I can do it, because I am right here, and if I kill you, then I get to the victory points first. Oh. Uh, even if I, okay, so even if I put the defense on him, it wouldn't matter. I was debating on putting a defense on him, or the, I wasn't too sure who you were gonna, they're so fast, they could have focused on either one. Yeah. And he's got so much physical defense, I figured you were gonna put both on him. I was going to, but you were too far away. Okay, so I, I, I put the shield on him thinking that, and I'm, I was debating, if I put the shield on him, then that makes this guy even more worthless against him, unless you roll two swords. Right. And then, yeah. But you got him, he's dead, that's game. You get to 12 points, I'm at 10. Wow. You, well, actually you got 13, I think. Technically 13, yeah. Yeah, is he a, he's a yeah. little guy, a medium guy. Yeah. Yep. So for, uh, good, good close game though. Yeah. Man. Dang, man, that was close. Cause like all the, the healing. Look, look, look how clutch the four healing was, right? Yep. It kept you in the game. That that's true. Yeah. Hundred percent. That's you, true. You would have died. Yep. I, I don't know if you put four healing on him or I not. I did. Oh, then that's that. <laughs> that's exactly right. Right. Cool. Yeah. Cool. 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 That's, that's not nuts, bad. eh? Yeah. Awesome. Well, super fun game. This is a couple times we've done the arena mode for Wild Descent. So leave comments below and let us know what you think. Uh, and if you want us to do the hunt mode in the future, if you'd like to see that, that's basically the campaign version of this game. Oh my. Apparently, 
the vast majority of players of this game play hunt mode. They don't play the arena mode. I'm always naturally, I always gravitate towards game modes like this instead, but I mean, I, I, to be fair, I haven't read the rules for the hunt mode yet. I was reading, I'm like, oh, that's a campaign, so that's probably not what we're doing for like a showcase video. For a showcase, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I'll go read the arena rules, I'm like, oh, these are awesome, yeah. Yeah. I so, especially like the initiative, like the locked in initiative, no matter what, this is what's going. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. I like that as well. Unless there's like a, I, I haven't looked at all the ascents, maybe they have a weird one that swaps the order. Maybe. That'd be kind of a cool mechanic, too. That, yeah. yeah. And there's also uh, different types of ascents. They're not called ascents. They're, they're like champions or something. They're for advanced play that we didn't decide to do in our first Which two games. Which is the hunt. Ever they, they're used in the hunt. They're also used in the hunt, but they can be in the arena, too. Yeah. Uh, they just, I, I'm not too sure. I think they take the role of a big creature. Yeah. What basically, is uh, these here. That's what we're talking about. Creatures. Elite mercenaries. Elite mercenaries. Awesome. Yeah. So, my eyes gravitate to this dude right here. Why? Oh, they're medium creatures. Because he looks like a corn berserker. So, they're only medium creatures? You can, and you can draft them. If you want to change it up, you can draft them instead of a medium. So, each player could like, take one instead of a medium creature. Interesting. Cool. Well, thanks again, guys, for tuning in to this showcase of Wild Descent, this That's battle cool. report. And uh, happy wargaming. Happy wargaming.